All right. Hi, Stephen. How are you doing? Hi, Stephen. Not too bad. You okay? Yeah, good, good. Good, How's good. Gathering up with everyone and, and getting ready for the big build up now. Yeah, it's been good, apart from bringing the, the Scottish weather over with us. You know, since we landed, it's been cloudy, raining, but the facility is magnificent. Uh, we trained this morning, hotel's, hotel's great, got the place to, our, to ourselves, so really impressed with the, with the facility. So it's you know, good to be away, good to see the boys again, and, and looking forward to getting going. Does it all feel a bit real now? It does. It does. The build-up's obviously been been a long one we had the the world cup qualifiers to to deal with first which was the focus but now you know certainly the last few weeks it's been about getting the squad decided and and picked but now it's now it's real we've obviously got two of the boys that are going to meet up with us in portugal billy and and scott who played the other night so now it's just about managing managing the loads of the players some have had a slightly longer break than others so now it's just that balancing act in, in getting the training spot on before we got the two friendly games. How important do you think these two games are in your preparations? Yes, yeah, so it's a big part. Obviously, by the time we get to that first friendly next week, some of the players have had a pretty decent break. Others have had a shorter break. So it's just about getting, hopefully, the last couple of bits fine-tuned, um, getting those match minutes in and, and getting them fully prepared for the first the first group game. Stephen how, have, um, Stephen, how have things changed in terms of when you went away with Ireland in 2002 in terms of these camps now and the, the rigours that the players have to go through and the preparation you have to put in? The, the major difference for me is the, the monitoring of all the players. Obviously, the players that have finished a, a couple of weeks ago, we've got you know the GPS... Oh the the sports science and the, the head of performance here have been in touch and in contact with the clubs and liaising with them and it's it's a lot more of that a lot more detail in in what the players are doing keeping an eye on on managing their their training loads um but apart from that it's 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 quite similar it's just those sort of details behind the scenes if you like with bigger staffs um bigger sports science departments bigger performance departments uh, and that, that real emphasis on, on keeping everyone fit before the tournament. So keeping that harmony as well. well I mean, you all, re all remember the stories of 2002, but how key is building that sort of camaraderie or continuing the camaraderie that you've already built up? Yeah, it's huge. I, I, I think that's there now. It's, it's not being easy and getting to that stage over the last couple of years where it kind of feels like a, a club environment. I think that's, that's built up over time with with um, a familiar, familiar reality, <laughs> can't even speak. The players being familiar with themselves because they've been in, you know, it's been a pretty settled squad now over the last uh, year to 18 months. There's not been too many changes. Um, and you can, you can just sense the feeling when they come into the squad now and meet up, similar to when I was involved in those island squads. You know, players would want to fly over a day or two early before we had to officially meet up and I think that's the same situation here now the players you know even last night when we had our first get together you know they're, they're hanging around that little bit longer they're staying together they're you know talking amongst themselves the phones are not out like we that we could argue has become a little bit of a problem in in recent years you know too many phones knocking about not not as much interaction but I think with this group when they when they get together they like to spend some quality time with each other. Just on that then, when you mentioned the phones and social media, is that something that you guys are going to tell the team to stay away from and, and put the phones away? Or is it, and given everything that's going on with social media just now, or is it something you're going to embrace during the tournament? Yeah, it's not something that's been mentioned in great detail as yet. I think on the whole, it's, it's quite a sensible, sensible group. With the, with the social media and, and how they use it. I think the importance of what we're going into, I think will mean that they're going to have to carry that on. You know, for me personally, I think in this situation and going into this tournament, for me as a player, I would probably avoid it. I've got to be totally honest. For me, going into it, those outside influences that, that you can't control, I think, you know, at times you can, you can do without and just do with the focus on going into the tournament 
you know, affecting what you can affect on the pitch and your training and, and in your games and not allowing the, I've got to be honest, the growing negativity on the social media sites, which is developing. We're seeing it again in the last few days. You know, Marcus Rashford after the game the other night. I, <laughs> there's just so much negativity around it at the minute. We need to go into this tournament with as much positivity and, and belief as possible. It used Even to be a cliche. you are away for a, a, a long time. What kind of activities or events have you got planned to keep the players amused and entertained and busy? Uh, that's probably the, that's probably one of the key, key points of the international tournaments. Because I remember when, when I went away in 2002, although it's the pinnacle of your career to get to a major tournament, it's, it's not easy for everybody being away from home for a month, being away from family. You know, if you're, if you're a player that's not getting too many minutes, remember in that Republic squad, there was players that got no minutes in the whole tournament. So it's, it's not always easy. So it's about keeping the group occupied. I think it's a squad that's been picked on ability, but characters as well. I think it's, it's that club environment. They enjoy being with each other. It's... You know, it's a, it's a group that, that in, enjoy being here. So that, that's the key thing. The, the golf course is on site. I'm sure at, at the right times, they few might go out and, and have a little knock, maybe a few quizzes here and there. But obviously, the, still, the restrictions are still in place as well. So it's not like tournaments before where you could maybe leave the, leave the site, go into town to a restaurant or wherever it might be. We still need to be very careful and keep the, the bubble protected. So we've, we're quite limited in what we can do, but you know, the bigger picture of it all is that it's, it's a, a month of your life where you can create history forever. You know, so that's, that's the key point. And I think the focus is going to be 100% from now going into the tournament. Is the plan to give everyone in the squad some game time over these next two friendlies? Uh, it'd be nice if we could. Um, obviously, we'll have to see, you know, in-game, how the games are going, uh, situations that we might need to look at. So, you know, it's possible. Um, but at the same time, it is about fine-tuning in these two games, looking at possible scenarios, po possible ways of playing, formations, looking at ideas, players in different positions. So there's only so much you can do in the two games. Um, but yeah, it's something that... You know, we'll look at in the in the duration of the two games. Has everybody turned up fully fit, or is there any anyone at all carrying little niggles or knocks? No, everyone's fit. There's one or two that had a couple of minor issues at the back end of of last season that have sort of managed their way through and have been doing their their work at the clubs. But everyone's here. Everyone's fit. Um, obviously, just waiting on the two boys, Billy and Scott, that will join us in Portugal. But apart from that, it's a fully fit squad and. You know, I'd be, uh, <laughs> I'd be very shocked if it wasn't a very empty physio room. Fingers crossed it stays empty, but I'm hopeful and, and pretty sure that that physio room will be staying pretty empty over the next few weeks. Stephen, you touched on the uh, golf course there. Can you just tell us a little bit about the, the, the resort you're staying at, why you've picked there, why Spain? Well, it's, a, it's sort of a, a, a decision and conversation that that we've had with, with head of performance, uh, Graham Jones, with, with the sports science departments and, and obviously above with, with Ian Maxwell and, and the board as well. When picking the suitable destination, it's the, the facility is first class. It gives us an opportunity once the, the rain and the clouds have cleared to get a little bit of sunshine. You know, the outdoor pool facility is there. The pitches are immaculate. The golf course is there. Um, and, it is, and it is a break as well. It's a break getting away from the player's usual environment. You know, hopefully for some, it will feel like that bit of a breakaway because some have only been off now for a, a few days. So coming away to somewhere like this, hopefully a little bit of sunshine. Hopefully the lads will get plenty of downtime to just relax and chill, whether it is a little knock of golf, or, you know, the outdoor pool facilities there. So sometimes by just staying on site where we usually train, you know, back in Scotland, it doesn't give you that feel of actually being away and having that total break away from, from the rigours of, of a long, tough season. Just wanted to quickly ask as well about uh, the new boys, David Turnbull, Nathan Patterson, how have they settled in this morning? Yep, been good, been good. Nice, <laughs> nice, um, nice bright session this morning. Obviously still, still Billy to come in of that new group, but it's, 
it's nice to freshen the group up as well with, with a couple of the younger players. I remember a similar sort of situation while I was playing for the Republic. There was a group of younger players that came into the, came into the senior setup that hopefully added a little bit of energy, you know, fighting for positions as well. Make no mistake about that. The players are not just going to be wanting to turn up and be bit part players. The manager said it himself that everyone's here to fight for their place. And, you know, already seeing in the, the session th this morning, you know, very little nerves from the, from the younger players, keen to get on the ball, keen to show the manager and, and our staff what they can do. So nice positive start. Stephen, um, Netherlands and Luxembourg in friendlies, how important are results going to be in those games? Obviously, it'd be nice to win the two games. You want to go into the tournament in the best shape possible, uh, full of confidence, but it doesn't always work out that way, whether it's pre-season with your club going into the start of the season or whether it's now the two friendlies going into the major tournament. You want to win both games, of course you do, but I think it's going to be about you know fine-tuning the last details, looking at one or two options, um, hopefully giving as many of the squad as possible, as many minutes as possible. Again, some have had a longer break than others, so maybe it's a case of some playing a little bit longer than others. But yeah, we want to we want to go into both games. We want to go into the tournament confident. We want to win both games, but ultimately it's a bit of a fitness exercise as well, getting those match minutes in before the tournament. How, how similar in style would you say the Netherlands and Luxembourg are in style and quality to the opponents you're going to face in the tournament? Well, obviously, the you know you can't you can't deny the fact that Netherlands are, are, a, are a standard of opposition. But Luxembourg, having watched them in recent years, they're an, an improving nation. You know, it shocked a few when they did when they beat Republic of Ireland in in Ireland. But individually, have got some decent players. It's a nation that the football's improving, the, the national team is getting better. Obviously, there'll be more household names and a higher level of, of player with, a, with the Netherlands. So both are going to be equal tests. You're probably going to the two games with, you know, expectations from outside with the, with the two games. Um, but we're going to obviously treat both oppositions as really tough encounters. Two good games for us going into the tournament and also a couple of things that might actually link to what we're going to face in the group stages. Stephen, you've worked with Steve Clark longer than most in the squad. What is it that um, what is it about his style of coaching and style of management that has got Scotland to these finals? Can you sum up what he's like, please? I think this is. I think I mentioned it in a couple of pre press conferences ago. It's that calmness. You know, never see him phased by anything. It doesn't give much away. I think you, we'll all agree on that one. You know, he's. You know, he doesn't give too much away emotionally. He was emotional after the the game in Serbia, but. I think he's also got that ability with him that what I found as a player, he can be tough to please, but I like that. You know, I like the fact that if you get a well done from him, you know that you've, it's more than a well done. It's, you're doing, doing very well. And, and I like that. I think that keeps the players on, his, on their toes a little bit, but I think with the balance of the staff we've got, there's a decent, decent mixture of personalities. Um, I'm obviously the, the younger one out of the group. So there's, there's things that I can offer maybe with certain, certain players where he might need my maybe a bit more youth on, the, on his side. But no, it's just a, a pleasure to be working with him. And you know, I can see from how I'm starting to coach and organise sessions when I'm setting them up that I'm taking one or two of his traits as well, moving a cone an inch or two either side, which he used to do to me when I was starting out. So, you know, a few of those traits are... Hopefully, hopefully, I'm I'm employing now. Sorry, Can you sum up? There. Was that Thanks, it? Everyone. Thank you, Stephen. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you.